California is so much different than Southern California. It's different, it's yeah. It's such a different energy. Epic cliffs and huge ocean underneath. And just from right here, we can go ride the ocean, get the sun, and we can go right up into the redwoods and be in twisties. I kind of feel like this is the future. Golly's the Mecca, man. Yeah. So many great little excursions on the way up. <laughs> so crazy. I'm so happy we found this place. Anything that makes noise attracts zombies. Is your dog snoring right now? Is yeah. That what I've been like, run or what? Let's do it. I was in my early 20s when I moved to Los Angeles. Just a kid trying to figure myself out. Dreaming of being an artist somehow. It was in the late 90s and I kind of fell into this underground scene of outsiders and rebels and actors. And then there were the bikers. I'll always feel at home here. This is the place where everything came together for me. The first place where I felt I belonged. Now, now I'm pretty damn lucky. I have a cool job where I get to ride motorcycles and kill zombies. On the weekends, I just ride motorcycles. Even though this is where I really learned to love bikes, and I rode all the time, I never really had the chance to explore. That's why I'm so excited to be back taking my first ride up the Pacific Coast Highway. From the Mexican border, the highway runs parallel with the Pacific Coast through California. At times, the highway winds along the sheer cliff face above the sea. I've heard that the Pacific Coast Highway is one of the most savagely beautiful roads you can do anywhere. I'm starting out in LA and winding 400 miles up the coast stopping in Santa Barbara and Pismo Beach before ending up in the ultimate biker town, Santa Cruz, where I'm going to talk bikes and The Walking Dead on one of my favorite podcasts. Before heading out, I'm stopping in Long Beach to pay homage to motorcycle guru Roland Sands. Roland's an award-winning, record-breaking, road racer turned custom bike artist. He's got a solid rep and towers over the innovative California biker scene. There's no way I'd miss a chance at finally checking out his shop. Hey, what's up, Norman? Hey, hey nice to meet you, Ron. Absolutely. I've heard great things about you. Welcome, man. I've heard some great things about you as well. Yeah, I came over here on this sucker, this Hyper Motard. Sick, man. I'm riding a Ducati Hyper Motard 939. It's got a sleek, minimalistic design and sweet Blade Runner curves. That makes it great for navigating through mangled city traffic and cutting loose on the open road. These bikes, man, to me, they're just like the sickest hooligan bike ever. Show me some of your stuff, man. I want to see yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. This is our home, dude. Wow. It's like a museum. Man, there's so many bikes crammed in here. There's 75 bikes in this building. Wow. This is like we build cafe racers out of Sportsters, so we have a whole line of hard parts that we sell. That's a Hyper Motard slash 999 Ducati. This is so Mad Max right here. Super zombie killer bike. Oh, that's one of the first customs I ever built. It's, it's beautiful. You yeah. pretty much do everything. Is there anything you don't do? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I know that very well. What's up? Good morning. Hi. How's it going, everybody? Hey. When people see your bikes, they automatically know they're yours. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Like, what makes a Roland Sands bike? Like, I think primarily, like, I, I want to build bikes that work better than the stock bike. We increase the performance level, better brakes, better wheels, you know? And I think the blending of styles, too. Like, this bike kind of just kicked off my career, in a sense. Because this bike was like the blend of sport bike 
and chopper culture right. smashed together in one motorcycle. And people just have never seen that type of approach to a bike before. Wow. Is this your pop right here? Yeah. My dad started a company called Performance Machines. So, I mean, when I was five years old, I was at drag races. You know, I used to go to Laguna Seca and go watch the Grand Prix back then. It was awesome. So I can ride one of these? This is the fleet, man. So we got flat track racers, Harley soft tails, cafe racers. This is a super Legera. What about this guy? How's this one? This is a BMW 9T. It's so pretty. It's a fun bike. We did a number plate on the front, moved the oil cooler up, so we exposed the breastplate. Olin suspension in front and rear. Custom exhaust, one-off exhaust. It's a badass sounding bike. Roland's taken me to one of his favorite spots nearby. I never thought I'd get a chance to ride alongside a legit championship racer like him. The dude makes crazy mind-boggling stunts look easy. Never been here. This is my old hood. This is your hood right here. This is where I grew up. There's nothing like being on one of Roland's bikes. It's clear that he takes pride in every single detail. The machine fits your body like a glove. This is beautiful, dude. Where are we right now? Palos Verdes. Palos Verdes. This is beautiful up here, man. Yeah, this is like a, a ride we do on the weekends. We come up here. And, yeah. and that's Catalina. That's Catalina right there. I spent a lot of time over there. Is, is PCH like this, this sort of vibe? It's even a little bit more grand. It's like the mountains just got, like God cut the mountains off, yeah, yeah. and it goes drops straight down to the ocean. Wow. It's amazing. I could live here in a heartbeat. This is great. Well, dude, right on. I'm out. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hit up and uh, go back to work, man. I wish I could go with you. I, that would be great. I would love it. I might steal your motorcycle and take it with me. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it likes you. Can I take it? Yeah, as long as you get it back. I don't care. <laughs> Done. Thank you, bro. All right, Norman. Be safe. Yeah. Have fun. Take chances. I will. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the bike, I felt buckled down to the road. That kind of connection is super rare, and I was honored that Roland let me borrow it for the rest of the ride. Now I'm heading to West Hollywood to pick up one of the dopest bikers I know, Imogen Latona. Imogen's from New Zealand, who came here to open the LA outpost of her family's shop, The Great Frog. Imogen's family invented the skull ring 40 years ago, and they're still churning out handcrafted, one-of-a-kind pieces to this day. We met a year ago when she tore through Georgia on a cross-country trip. She invited me to come ride the PCH back then, and I'm stoked we're finally going to do it. Yay! Sweetheart. 
Hi. Hey. Good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a minute. Hell yeah! Look at this thing. Yeah, right. I just I took a Ducati to Roland Sands's place, and I liked this so much, I kind of stole it from him. That is a crazy looking yeah. bike. So we'll take this up the coast with us. And this is yours, right? Yes. Well, it's not mine. I'm borrowing it, but I love this thing. Imogen's riding a custom Harley Dyna T-Sport made by LA's own Power Plant Motorcycles. With high-set T-bar handlebars and a blacked-out powder coating, this bike is as badass as she is. This will be great going up the coast. I know, and this has like an adjustable windshield. Oh, it goes up and down? Yeah. I'm excited to get on our bikes and start the ride. Awesome. But first... Show me your shot. I gotta pick up a ring Imogen promised me. Come in the shop. Right. This is awesome in here. Did you, I mean, it, this is all you. Yes, so my uncle and my aunt started it, and my parents, my mom and dad, met working there together, so have a jewelry family. Wow, tell me about the creepy skeleton up there in the corner. Real or not real? It's not real. This is actually our resident-only real skull in the shop. Our London shop is actually built on a plague pit. So when there was like the Black Plague and they had mass graves, and they excavated in the basement of our shop, and it was a mass grave. And a lot of the original skulls we have in our London shop are from that. What? What? Sort of creepy. You need to pick a ring as well. You've got to have a skull ring. Can you pick one for me? I can do that. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like you need a gnarly looking yeah, skull. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is perfect for me. Let's see if he fits. Are you excited? We're excited. All yeah. right. It's my first see. ring ever. And it fits! Yeah, this is badass. Were you wearing all your stuff in Atlanta when we met? I mean... On the cross-country trip, I wore some of my stuff. I wasn't as heavily loaded as I usually am when I'm around L.A. That was really fun when you guys all came down. I had such yeah. a good time. And we're going up uh, PCH to Santa Cruz. Okay, and that's the most beautiful ride in California you can do. There's, I mean, there's a podcast up there, which is Motorcycle Misfits. Really? Like, I'm scared to hear my voice on the podcast, but it'll be fun. Good. Tonight, there is a Airstream motor camp that would be so cool to stay at. Oh, nice. It's deck them out to make them look awesome. Where is that? In Santa Barbara. I love Airstreams, but I've never been in an Airstream. All right. Yeah. Cool. Let's go hit the highway. All right, let's do this. All right. Ready, babe? This changed so much here. Like, there used to be this place called Damiano's right there, a pizza place. It's where I first became an actor, was in that pizza place. That's cool. It's true. I really did become an actor at Damiano's. It's a long story, but let's just say I was in the right place at the right time. And the rest is history. Now it's time to head north. 97 miles to Santa Barbara. This is fun. I like riding around with you. It's going to be even better when we're on the open road, too. And it will be like daytime and like beautiful coast. We'll be picking up the PCH in the morning. So we just need a place to bed down. Santa Barbara Auto Camp with personal airstreams couldn't be more perfect. This is so cool. They match my bike. Oh, yeah. I love that they put, like, AstroTurf around, too. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God, they have a bathtub. Coffee pot, check. It's even got, like, a little kitchen and a mini fridge. I'm having this one. Oh, this is yours? You got it. I'm done. bagging this one. Tomorrow is going to be, like, PCH. Good. Beautiful. No L.A. traffic. Yeah, let's hope so. It'll yeah. be the pretty part. Yeah, good. I'm gonna go take a bath in an <laughs> air bubble. <laughs> Bye! Peeper? <laughs> a little peeper? The ocean! Oh, the ocean! He's electric. Oh, cool. He built his whole place out of junk. He was a garbage man for 30 years. Wow. Oh, my God!
This is so cool. I like sleeping in an airstream. It was pretty cool, except for like, like every time you like walk by a desk, you like clear the desk by accident. You know what I mean? I didn't have that problem. Yeah, well, you're skinny. That's why. All right, let's roll. You're not exactly fat. Not exactly fat. What is that supposed to mean? I'm excited to ride. Yeah, it's gonna be nice today. <laughs> north on the PCH, 104 miles from Santa Barbara to Pismo Beach. Can you hear me? When do we get to the ocean? I can't understand you. How'd you sleep in that airstream? I'm just gonna guess at what you're saying. Something about an alarm clock. Nothing about Alaska. <laughs> I baked Alaska. The ocean! Oh, the Woo! ocean! Yeah! Woo the Pacific Coast Highway is one of the most breathtaking roads ever. It opened in the late 1920s as part of the Roosevelt Highway, the first road to link the Mexican and Canadian borders. With its snaking curves and sharp drops, people travel from all over the world to see what makes it so uniquely California. Look how sparkly it is! Yeah. With the ocean right there next to you, man, this is how you're supposed to ride. I mean, check out that view. Pismo Beach, 15 miles. Yeah. Pismo Beach is five and a half miles of pristine sand dunes and one of the only beaches in America you can actually drive onto. Let's go to the beach. Which is right up our alley. I'm down to see what kind of off-road action we can find. Look how pretty this is. Yeah, this is beautiful. What are these little birds called? Oyster catchers? They're cute. Catch one. <laughs> how cold do you reckon the water is? Freezing? I bet it's freezing. <laughs> Stay away from me! That looks like dune buggy, right? That's cool. Have you ever dune buggy? Never. Me Never. neither. Yeah, it's good dune, dune buggy. Dune buggy. Dune buggies on the beach? There's no way we're going to let this opportunity pass by. How's it going? I'm Norman. Roman Glad to meet you, Robert. Hi, nice Imogen. Nice to meet you. Hey. Oh, cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys first time out here? First yeah. time ever on a First time here ever and a dune buggy. buggy. In the dunes itself. So Part of our protocol, too, is you have to watch a safety video. OK. What do you do to your screen? <laughs> well, it's you work modified. It's kind of scary to watch a safety video on the screen. You know what I mean? Hard on things out here. Avoid all wildlife. Can you imagine trying to run over these little birds? Do people do that? They try. All risks for any damage, injury, or loss of life. Loss of life. Animal life. Shall we hit it? Let's do it. What's the fastest one you have? This one? Yeah. <laughs> Good time. Yeah, I'm Thank excited. you. Everybody say whiplash. Hey guys, keep going. Woo! Right, you ready? Check this out. Are you serious? Oh my god, that looks crazy. <laughs> this way. I'm going right down this big mountain. <laughs> oh, I got stuck. I got stuck on this hill. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs>
get your bed. I'm driving like a grandma, aren't I? This way. Here we go. Follow me. <laughs> Let's go to the big one. one. Oh my god. And goodbye. Ah. Oh my god, I want to do this for like five hours. That was, that was awesome. That was so cool. I could seriously ride these dunes forever, but we've got miles of highway in front of us. Oh, it was rad. Well, anytime. Thanks, yeah. man. Good. So it's time to get off the beach and back on the road. It's basically a place built out of junk. There's stuff in here from like the 30s, 40s, up until the 80s. Wow. This is from oh, this. The yes. Walking Dead. That's rad. This bike is running right now. Oh, Wait, it's already? running right now? It's running right now. <laughs> Shut up. So cool. You're a ninja right now. Yeah, dune buggies are awesome. Yeah, dude. I had no idea it was that much fun. I feel like I've gained weight in my palms on this trip. My palms have become meaty. I think the dune bugging, like whacking your hands on the steering wheel, I think makes them swell because my rings are all real tight. Yeah, I couldn't get the thing on my thing, so I put the thing in your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? <laughs> We've ridden 200 miles with another 50 to go tonight. And this next leg of the ride is magical. Wow, California sunset right there. See, that's one thing I don't get to see in New York. An ocean sunset that rolls over the waves to the end of the world. When I first got to L.A., I worked at a Harley shop called Dr. Carl's Hog Hospital. I did a lot of grunt work. But on the plus side, I got to see a lot of different bikes. Back then, I always wondered what it would be like to ride up the California coast. And this is exactly how I pictured it. I start to daydream. I just start like, oh, I'm ADD, D, 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 D. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> Bye, son. Oh, yeah. You feel the cold creeping in. Yeah. It sounds like a tornado right now. I can't hear what you're saying, but I'm happy. <laughs> I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Is that an abandoned house? Yeah, it looks like it. That looks amazing. Can we go in there? What the hell? Hey. What the? How are you guys doing? How you doing, man? Norman. Hi. Pretty good. My name's Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. California is full of weird tourist attractions, like Nitwit Ridge in the small town of Cambria. The man who built this place, his name was actually Art Beale, uh -huh. but they gave him a couple colorful nicknames. One of them was Captain Nitwit. Wow. He started building it in 1928. He lived in this place till 1989, till he was 92 years old. Wow. I love all the stone Oh, yeah, that's cool. See all these handrails? This was the plumbing system. They all carried water. Oh, wow. There's handrails throughout the whole property. He also he had a lot of toilet seats, which um, he would actually use for picture frames. <laughs> he called this his woman's room. What the? Wait, who are you? 
Like, how, how are you involved here? <laughs> My wife and I bought this in 1999 from oh. the Art Beale Foundation. I thought I'd give the Anti-Hertz Castle tour. William Randolph first built this place in 1919 out of just massive amounts of money. And this is the anti. This guy was a garbage man in town that took all the garbage from town and put oh, this so massive he place together. And put this together he got us? paid as a garbage man. But now watch your head and I'll take you up the stairway. Art claimed this stairway stayed 50 degrees. This was his refrigerator. I this feel stuff the up chill here? in here. It is colder. That's his stuff. What you is hand that? that off the fruit trees. There's a peaches, there's apricots. There's stuff in here from like the 30s, 40s, up until the 80s. This is so crazy. I'm so happy we found this place. <laughs> you guys can see his clothes are still in here. Oh my God. People said half the time all he'd be wearing is his bathrobe with nothing else on under it. And he'd walk around town in that thing. They'd tell me when he got older and he'd get windy. Oh my God. <laughs> then this is um, his two-seated outhouse. He said he put his and her toilets in here so he could sit here and have conversations with people. What a crazy guy. He thought he was a swinger, but then he never had kids. He has no family. Anyway. He never had any family. I thought by now, after 15 years I've been up here, I'd be saying, I'm his grandkid, I'm his grand. No, it's weird. But he liked ladies, and ladies liked him. He's okay. like an enigma. He's, He's like a loner. Yeah. 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 And then a guy with no family or anything, he created his own legacy yeah. just with nothing but junk. This dude literally built his whole life into these walls, coming up with a way to turn trash into treasure. There's a toilet on top of the roof, and people said it's his throne. He's the king of the castle up there. Even toilet seats. The Thank you for showing us all of this. Take care of it. Yeah, you too. This is just the kind of wacky stuff I've been expecting to see since we crossed from Southern to Northern California. And just a couple miles away from where we're going to call it a night. Bye, cool house. Day three. There's nothing better than waking up in Big Sur, home of the Bixby Bridge. 260 feet high and 700 feet long. This bridge is a beast. One of the tallest single-span concrete bridges in the world. And finally, after 400 miles, we're here in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is a little town tucked between the Pacific and the Santa Cruz Mountains. I just like the way the air smells up here. It's so clean. Surrounded by incredible natural beauty and with a close proximity to the San Francisco counterculture and Silicon Valley tech scenes, it's the perfect spot for anyone coming to California looking for reinvention. Look at that crazy house. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's got a nice, like, eclectic feel. Hey, when cities start taking over and making everything look the same. We're here to drop in on a local podcast. But first, we're headed to Zero Motorcycles, a pioneer manufacturer of electric motorcycles. Are these electric? Oh, cool. For some reason, I imagine them like looking real crazy different. California is a hotbed of environmental action, so it makes sense that they made their home here. Ready? Check this out. Yeah. I used to have a dog named Zero. Really? Yeah. Zero's Scott Harden is going to show us their bikes and take us for a spin. Nice to meet you, too. Welcome to Zero. All right. All right, let's go on back into the belly of the beast. This is where all of the main assembly is done. It's weird to go to a motorcycle shop, building motorcycles, and it's not loud. It's just super weird. Yeah. <laughs> This is where it all started for Zero. This is the first electric motorcycle ever built. It was kind of a cross between an overgrown mountain bike and a motorcycle. I think it's cool. I really like that one. Well, it was, it was the idea of what can we do to change the way the world experiences motorcycles. What kind of bike did you ride before you got into electric motorcycles? I was a dirt bike rider. I was born in Las Vegas, and I rode dirt bikes. 
And then I started doing all the big desert races. You know, I, I kept taking on bigger challenges in Europe and then Africa. Wow. The scariest moment in my life on a bike was in Senegal, going down these roads at uh, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour through bushes that are this tall on each side, and there's animals running out in front of you, <laughs> pigs and ostriches. You're just thinking, God, don't. Don't step out in front of my front wheel. It scared me to death. I hit a cow at 80 miles an hour. You had I, a cow. Hit, I bounced off the hoods <laughs> of cars. You're so lucky. I could tell stories. How's it going, guys? Do you guys all ride electric bikes now? Do you? Yeah, we do. I have ridden some before. Yeah? I've ride my own motorcycle mostly. What do you have? I've got a Harley and a couple dirt bikes. Is that like the enemy, or is it everybody loves everything? Everybody loves everything. Okay. okay. Yeah. Have you gone on one yet? I have, well, we're about to try one, yeah. Yeah. Sick, yeah. I hope you like it. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> nice to meet you, dude. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. How's it going, man? Good. Since you're here. Uh oh. No way, wait. Oh, this is from oh, this. Yes. Walking Dead. That's right. So. <laughs> Big fan of yours. Oh, thanks, man. Have you guys ever thought about doing an electric dune buggy? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Own a hat. All right. Great frog. Yeah. That's when I had short hair. That was way back when. I feel like I'm the only person who's never seen this show. Get, get, get out of here. Get out of here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys, go to work. Go to work. Yeah. Go to work. Okay. I'm Try it see out. If I see, can what, see what fits touch you best. The What's your favorite color? What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> this is straight up dirt bike right here. Well that's an off-road trail bike, yep. I, I'm this, taking this one. This is the FXS. This is the inner city hooligan bike. And it's very lightweight. It you know, feels nice. It's only 290 pounds. I think you'll really like that one. All the stuff's where you normally expect. You know, your turn signal's here, brake where you normally expect a foot brake, and then the last thing you do to arm this thing is hit the throttle switch. Okay. Now, that means this bike is running right now. Wow. That's wait, finished. so it's on wait, it's already? it's running right now? It's <laughs> running right now. Shut up. Wow. Wow. Away you go. I think we've chosen our weapons. Let's go out and give them a whirl. All right. All right? Cool. I can't believe that that was, that was running while we were standing there. It's weird getting on a bike and not knowing how it's going to feel. But that's what I love about trying out new bikes. Are we ready? I think so. Scott's taking us up to see the legendary California Redwoods. Whoa. This is so crazy. Yeah, this is nuts. It's going to be the perfect way to find out what the zero is all about. I'm just, this is blowing me away how smooth this is. It's like your, your ass is sliding on ice. <laughs> I just creeped up on you and you had no idea. Yeah. No, I didn't. I you was like, I mean? where's I was Norman? Just... Sometimes I get on a bike just to escape. The roar of the motorcycle creates this wall between me and my surroundings. It smells really fresh and... It does. Like... Healthy and like green up here. mossy. Yeah. That's what makes being on this bike so strange. There's no wall. This is you and the world feeding off of each other. I mean, it's perfect, really, for like going through this beautiful forest. You're just kind of gliding. I kind of feel like this is the future. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, imagine in like 50, 100 years when like cities are smogged up, everything will be electric. This is crazy because I can't see the bike. Does it feel like you're flying? Yeah, it does. <laughs> and there's nothing like riding it through the redwoods. You should try it. Amazing. Go to sport! Whoa! Whoa! Have you put it in sport mode? Yeah, dude, it's like, like, oh my god, it's terrifying. All right. Look, I put it in spot, it's crazy! You just feel the extra tug, it's like... 
I swallowed my, my Adam's apple for a second. It's a great ride with you guys. Yeah, awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. That is getting so good. Really nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, I want an electric motorcycle now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we got more Thank converts. You. That's cool. <laughs> cool. Do you want to do your time? Yeah, of course. I'm ask you to sign something. I kind of want to tell you a little backstory real quick. Yeah, tell me. This belonged to my late brother, Chris, and uh, he's oh, wow. a huge, huge fan of yours. Just like posters of you guys up in the room and everything. And, uh, oh, wow. He loved you guys a lot, and this was actually in the rack with him. Oh, that's why it's all mangled like this. Oh, dude. I wanted to see if you could sign it. It would mean the world to me. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Of course. Sign it to Chris if you would. Chris, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Man. It was a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, be well, dude. Right on. Yeah, man. Take care, man. Later. Bye. Hearing something like that just rips me to shreds. Reminds me that life is fragile. I'm honored that I got to meet that guy and hear his brother's story. Right on, brother. This is a pretty town. I like it. Yeah, it's really cute here. You know, Santa Cruz has some really cool streets. Oh, this is cool. Look at this wall. So it's nice to get off our bikes and check out the details we might have missed while we're riding by. Hi. Oh, shut up. Hi. Good to nice see you. Nice to see you, too. Congratulations. Do you live up here? Yes, yeah, where I live. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. How are you, dude? Yeah. Nice to see you, sweetheart. Nice you. Yeah, what a pleasure. Yeah. That lady that just said hi, oh, she, she was a director on Walking Dead. What a small world. She's Santa awesome. Santa Cruz. Yeah. Still have to watch it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to send you every disc, and I'll send you like a okay. little, you know, sit, write an essay or something. How long have you been riding? How did you get started riding motorcycles? I got into riding because of my dad. I used to hitch a ride on the back of his bike to university and to work. He had a BMW Dakar dual sport thing, and I would jump on the back of that. And now it's carried on as the inspiration as why I love to ride is because of my dad. He, he died like a year and a half ago. So whenever I ride, is like, my special time. Yeah. That cross country trip was like the one year anniversary of his death, so it was I it was remember. a very, very special thing to have happen. I like how your family just you pass the torch from you know things like how you do your rings and unintentionally, your but yes. It's great. People don't have that. It's great. I like that they have like shrubberies everywhere. A shrubbery. If you do you like Monty Python? Uh, oh my god, I love Monty Python. Monty Python and the Holy Grail is my favorite movie of all time. With the little rabbit? Yeah. That yeah. goes after his throat. And the other knights the same. Yeah. Exactly. It's nice to be back along with bikes. Yeah, I agree. I kinda like the rumble, but those bikes were cool, I gotta say. I like how he said, too, he's not trying to replace other motorcycles. It's just another experience. Yeah. You know? Last stop, and I couldn't be more excited. We're headed over to the Recycle Garage. I like Santa Cruz. Home of this really cool podcast called Motorcycles and Misfits. Who doesn't like geeking out on bikes with a bunch of misfits? Welcome to Motorcycles and Misfits at the Recycle Garage. You guys are getting all Batman on me. <laughs> What's the best bike for the zombie apocalypse? I'm going to tell you, and you're not going to like my answer. Here. I gotta tell you, Northern California is so much different than Southern California. It's different, yeah. That is such a different energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. My first big California ride is winding down. But first, Imogen and I are gonna make one final pit stop at the Recycle Garage, where a bunch of local bikers put on one of the coolest weekly podcasts on the West Coast. It's called Motorcycles and Misfits. 
Hello. What's up? Hi. I'm Norman. Hi. Liza. Nice to meet you. Nice Hi. To meet you. Hi, Imogen. Hey, Imogen. Nice to meet you. These are some nice little rides you got. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit nicer version than mine, but you know. This is awesome, though. That's, Thank you. That's well, beautiful. Yeah. I built that one. Did you really? Right on. Yes. Do you teach people that don't know how to work on bikes how to work on bikes as part of Yes, but nobody here is a mechanic. Everyone helps each other work on bikes. We teach people how to ride, help them buy their gear, teach them what are the cool movies to watch, right, right, right. expose them to the entire culture. Wow. Yeah, and so we've kind of built up this crazy community. I like that you have such an eclectic mix of bikes here. Hey, if they can ride, we'll let them in. How did the podcast start? When you get a group of people sitting around the garage working on bikes, you have conversations. conversations. Right. We play pranks, we tell stories, we share rides and experiences and opinions. Wow. How cool. Yeah, and so we thought, how can we bottle this and share it with everyone? Podcast. We're ready. Check one, two. Microphone check. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Five, four, three. Hey there. Welcome to Motorcycles and Misfits at the Recycle Garage here in sunny Santa Cruz, California. Warm and sunny. It was quite sunny, Something actually. Like that. Let's get to one of our topics. What's the best bike for the zombie apocalypse? And we have a special guest here, somebody who actually has experience in this field. <laughs> and I want to get their opinion. So I'd like to welcome here Norman Reedus. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm going to tell you, and I think you're not going to like my answer. Oh, you know, yeah, I want to hear Yeah, I think what I would do is I'd get one of these zero bikes, <laughs> and I would put a solar panel on the back of it. <laughs> what it does, anything that makes noise attracts zombies. Right. Right? Which, and I caught a lot of flack for having that that triumph with the ape hangers. I caught a lot of flack. And then I built another bike miraculously in like six hours on that show. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I get a lot of flack because that one makes a lot of noise as well. How did you yeah. come to have that bike? That That's supposed to be Merle's bike. And did he, did he customize the frame up that high? I guess. I don't know what the <laughs> <f> <laughs> So, I would like to make some suggestions. Uh-oh, here we go. So first, you should consider an anti-theft device of some kind. Ooh, like Just it. saying. Yeah, I like it. Second, more mirrors, I would suggest. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to maybe see something coming up behind you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Lastly, uh, a machine gun on the front, because what bike isn't cooler with a machine gun on the front? Yeah, we've thought about attaching weapons to that thing. Oh, you could just drill a hole in your exhaust and squirt some soap in it, make a, like a smoke screen. You guys are getting all Batman oh, on me and stuff. <laughs> How has motorcycling changed you? A bunch. It's changed me a bunch. Like, I ride to work every day, and I think about what I'm about to do, and it really gets me in the mood, and then I... I write home, you know, I, I think about what I did. I don't know, it's 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 almost like yoga or something at some point, you know what I mean? The best rides, I think, are the spontaneous ones. I gave an award at the Country Music Awards in Nashville, and I was down in Georgia, and, you know, they booked me a flight to go there and everything, and I'm sitting there watering my plants, and I'm looking at my bike, and I'm watering my plants, and I said, and I grabbed a suit, I shoved it in a backpack, wrote all my directions on my arm, and then I kept going through rainstorms and I just kept losing them. Yeah. But that ride to Nashville is one of my favorites. For, for... Is your dog snoring right now? Is yeah, that what that was? Like, oh my God, that's adorable. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening, and thank you guys for joining us. That's been a great so pleasure. Thank, thank you yeah. for showing up. I was looking for a group ride when I first moved here, and I ran into Zach. He had a, 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 a crappy motorcycle, no, I'm uh, sorry. but a nice jacket, so I asked him. You know, yeah. I was like, so where's the ride? And I asked yeah. him if, uh, if they could show me that I changed my oil, and this is where we are now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> And that was three years ago. <laughs> nice. When I first showed up, Liza just like shoved a broken moped at me and was like, here, fix this. She does that to a lot of people. Yeah, and that's, kinda, that's how she hooks you in. She's like, oh, here's this free bike. Just get it running and it's yours. And two years later, I was still here. That's cool. <laughs>
And she's all, hey, Dad, like when she was 13, I want to ride motorcycles. I'm all, hell no. And she's like, whatever, I'll be 18 someday. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, so you guys are father and daughter. That is so yeah. cool. That is super Yeah, cool. so then I started hanging around, and then I just got hooked. You guys all know what it's like. You hop on the bike, you roll on the throttle, and everything melts away. Right. So we're chasing the sun. Let's saddle up and do a quick ride. Shall we hit it? Oh, right. Sounds good. good. I always feel at home, surrounded by a bunch of outsiders. And California is a magnet. It attracts people who don't fit in anywhere else. Everyone's got a totally different vibe here. But their love of bikes ties them together, and I love that. And the misfits are doing the rest of us a huge favor, bringing these unique bikes back to life. That's the kind of passion for motorcycles, for life, that has made my ride up the California coast so incredible. It's not just here. California is a place where all of us misfits can fit in. And sure, you're not going to find roads like the PCH anywhere else on the planet. It's empowering to learn how to do something. If you can build or fix something, what else can you do in your life, you know? But California is more than just breathtaking beauty. It's the people here, the sense of rebellion you find everywhere you go, the creativity. The freedom to try whatever the hell you want. That's the California I found on this ride. And that's the California I'm going to keep coming back to for the rest of my life. You guys are awesome. I, I really love what you guys have going here. This is really cool. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on this trip. Yeah, this has been a, a blast. You're welcome. That was awesome. Dune buggy. Dune buggies, yeah. Yes, and the coastline and the sunsets.